Hi everybody, it's Lola. I'm here with another craft. We're going to make this super awesome, adorable, uh, easy to make candy holder. Okay, so for this craft you're going to need um, a clay pot and the matching saucer and a rosebud bowl bowl, pardon me, um, and what I mean by that is this type of a, uh, it's a rounded glass bowl that comes up, and we call them a bud vase. Um, this, I think, was either $1.69 or $1.99 at, um, I got it at Michael's, and so yeah, so you get that. And what I did was I picked out the vase I wanted, because there might be multiple sizes, went down to the clay pot section uh, so that I could make sure that they matched the right size. Do you know what I mean? So this is, this is kind of, you saw um, what it's going to look like. Uh, this is kind of how you tell. And then of course you make sure that you have the clay pot, uh, the clay saucer that goes with it. Um, I've removed the labels. They really ticked me off. As you can see, there's still some residue and I just can't get it off. I've washed it twice now. Um, I'm just waiting for this to dry quite well before I paint it. I think it's just going to, I'm going to, I'm hoping because I'm using chalk paint that I can get off, get it off. Uh, I've been really upset. I've noticed lately that there are a lot of labels, like glued on labels that are just attached and it's like companies don't care that it's attached to what you're going to be displaying. With this, it would normally be the bottom, right? Like you wouldn't see it. So they didn't, but for this, that's the, the kind of thing you need to paint. Um, clay pots are actually pretty, they're kind of porous. So you can use any acrylic paint. Um, it's not going outside. It's not really outside safe because of the glass. So you could use just any acrylic, cr you know, craft paint like this, like a, do you know what I mean? This is a white one, which is what I used on the little candle holder. But um, you could use the red or you could choose a different color if you wanted to. I had left over chalk paint from painting bookshelves. So I'm going to use it because it's a really nice red color. Um, I like using up stuff that I have so that I can save some money. Um, and I think the chalky finish, the chalk paint will be really nice and thick and cover the clay pot quite nicely. So uh, you need that. You also need some glue. I have goop. Uh, all-purpose contact adhesive and sealant. You could also use E6000. Uh, I love that stuff. I suggest it for almost anything. Be careful if you're going to be using it on plastic because some of these glues, um, they will actually degrade and the plastic will, it will ruin the project. It won't stick and problems will happen. But for wood, on metal, on glass, on ceramic, on paper, on so many different things, uh, these type of the goop or E6000, they work amazingly. So you'll want that. Um, I have to say, I cannot find two pieces that I had. There's a decorative piece you can do to make it look like a candy machine. And that's just buy a little uh, wooden disc and paint it in a silver, like it's a little dial. And then a wooden ball for the top handle. Kind of like the way you see this. It has a little, uh, I just glued a bead to the top of that. I had them and I cannot find them, so I am going to do all of this and then when I go to work, I'm going to pick some up and finish it off just to show you. But it looks quite nice without them too. So um, yeah, that's how you do it. Now to get started, this is so super easy. Move the glass away so you don't knock it over so it doesn't get dirty. I move the glue out of the way. I'm not using the white. So we have the uh, thick red chalky paint. We have the clay pot. And I'm going to use this here, this brush. I have the sponge brush too, but this is so thick that it's going to just soak into the sponge brush. And so then you just, just paint the pot. And you're going to want to paint everything that's going to be seen. Like this. And I like doing it kind of just in strokes, so because it has, you kind of see the, see the texture. But after one or two coats, that's all going to kind of blend in. Going to kind of... <laughs> Pardon me, <laughs> but you're gonna you're going to want to paint the entire thing, and cover it all, and you will want to paint the top. Let's just get that done because the glass is clear and you're gonna see it. Um, you could technically paint the top black if you wanted, but there's no need to get fancy like that. Just and remember, we're gonna do multiple coats, so the first one's really just to 
do a nice base cover. You don't want it too thick, but you'll see it dries, starts to dry really nice and quickly. So what will happen, just keep painting. And the reason I haven't done the ring is just because it's going to make it easier to hold on to while I'm painting and, and make it less messy. Uh, I like less messy on my fingers. I don't mind getting messy. It's going to happen. When you get creative, you never know what's going to happen. So get it all over yourself if you need to. But for cleanup, it's just nicer if you don't. And, and I, the more I try not to, the better, because... I'll get messy and then by the end of the project I'll be leaving red fingerprints everywhere and I'll be cross-contaminating uh, things on the desk or you never know like so it's not like it's important to stay completely clean but staying tidy and trying not to be messy is always good always good all right so you'll see the first one we're gonna let that dry there make sure all those little corners and then I'm just sticking my hand in there to hold it and painting the ring, the rim of it. And you do, because you want everything that's going to be seen, so you kind of wanted to get it a little... I did it again, you kind of want to... You really want to make sure that it goes just at least a little around the rim. Because that way when it's set down... That way, when you set it down, uh, you won't see the shadow like or any of the clay pot part. There won't be any showing because at least around, it doesn't have to be the whole way. And you don't have to paint the inside, obviously, because you're not going to see that when it's sitting. So just keep painting. Now the saucer part is always a little bit more difficult, but there. So we have that done. I want to let that sit. So, I am just being a little bit ingenious, stick my finger in the hole, I'm putting it on there. That way, uh, it doesn't stick to the paper. You can just put it down on your craft mat, on your uh, scrap paper, on whatever you use to cover your surface, to keep your surface safe. Uh, but as it dries, it may stick to it when you pull it up, and I mean, you're going to be applying more coats anyway. So this gets interesting when it's time for the saucer, because again... It doesn't have the hole, and so I find that that sometimes makes it more difficult to paint. I love that little drainage hole on the clay pot when you're painting the whole thing. It just gives a little place for you to stick, you know, stick it on your finger and let it kind of dangle like a like a bell does. Just so, yeah. so we keep. I'm a little bit sloppier on this one, as you can see. Like I said, it's always I'm always attempting to be to be not so messy. All right, keep painting. Just And then the choice with this is because it's going to sit on top and it's usually going to be filled, so you're not really going to see underneath. But it's also kind of nice be to cover, you know, to do the whole thing. And this is what happens. You get to here. And where am I going to hold? There's no way. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to paint that part and get a little on my thumb. There. And so that I am going to have to put down, obviously, because there's nowhere else to hang it. All right. Let's wipe a bit of this up off my hands. We're going to pick this one up and check it so it's mostly dry. And because we're just doing another coat, um, I'm going to avoid, I'm going to start over here where it's a little more dry. I'm just going to go right from the bottom up now. Because uh, as we're doing the next coats, I kind of want to make all of the grain go in the same way. Uh, that's the thing. With chalk paint, it's thicker. So depending on what you use for a brush, you might see the brush marks until you start to do more and more coats and thicken it up and then it starts to kind of uh, bleed out. You don't see it. It starts to fade out. Like it all goes together. Um, when you're using uh, a thinner acrylic paint, and you could actually add water, a little water to this to make it um, less thick 
if it's if you find it's too thick. Like this was this was a little bit older. This I think this was almost a year old. This uh, container of chalk paint, and it had been opened and partially used. And so what ended up happening uh, was that it had started to thicken, and that's that's what happened as it's exposed to air. Uh, some of the water begins, you know, it just naturally begins to evaporate and dry up. And so it was much thicker than I wanted it to be. See, this is a really um, bristly brush, too, that I have here. I might see if I have a softer bristle. But as you can see, painting it up with the red. And you just keep covering and you just I go all in the same same direction now that way you get the nice easy even coverage I think it looks quite nice just keep painting and depending on what type of paint you have the liquidier paint the liquidier the um the less thick paint will actually take a few more coats sometimes but it will also like I said, it's, I, I use the term bleed out, but it, it's that it, it, it all kind of blends together a little bit easier just with the craft paint because it is uh, a little bit more, it seems a little bit uh, runnier would be the nice term. All right, so I am going to finish painting this, let it sit, and do one more coat and see how that goes. And again, it's really just doing it um, until you're satisfied. And then I'm also going to finish the saucer part. So I'll come back when that's all done and get to the glue in. All right, so I have finished painting and we've let it dry. And you'll see, um, I don't know if you can see because of the way it's been been focusing. You, you can actually see the stroke lines a little bit. Not a big deal. I actually kind of really like how it looks. Uh, it's not a super vibrant red, but it's still nice and, and um, thick and deep. So I love that. And this really ticked me off. This is where the glue was. Uh, that it wouldn't, the adhesive, it didn't stay on properly, and I cannot get paint to stick there. So thanks a lot, uh, companies that attach their stickers that way. Yeah. So um, as for now, I don't have the bead for the top. So this is how it's going to be. I will show you once it's done with the bead when I get that. Now comes the next step. It's super easy. This is a super easy quick craft. It's just waiting for the thing to dry. Uh, so you take your clay pot, you take your goop, and let's see if I can get it open because the one thing about this is that it does stick oh, very much. And you'll see it, um, you'll see how it kind of gets all around the, the rim there it dries on. I'm always trying to clean it off, but you have to be careful because if you press too hard on the tube, if you press any pressure at all, too much comes out. And as you can see, it's already starting to, uh, let me see if I can get that up. It's already starting to come out. So all you do is you just glue it on. And uh, when it comes to a tube like this, I always thought that it was common sense, but not everyone knows. Um, Press from the bottom of the tube up so that it's it you're not going to end up with a whole bunch at the at the end of the tube and none in the middle and some at the top. Uh, what you want to do is don't just glue it all over. You want to make sure that it hits the rim, this raised little rim part. If it doesn't hit there, and you'll see I'm using a lot, but when it comes to to glass on ceramic like this or on clay, I just think it's better to have too much on there like that. And this is pretty thick. So then take, take your glass and just affix it on. And what you'll see 
is that it actually, and let me just pull a little bit of this extra off. See, I'm, I don't need, you don't need a special tool. You don't need, you could use like a palette knife or something, but I'm just using this um, pencil crayon that was on my desk. And I'm just taking the excess glue that has come out from underneath. And there we go. So that's just a quick cleanup. And then you have to leave it. So now comes the waiting game again. At this same time, had I had it, I would be gluing the little wooden bead on the top of there to put it on. So we'll let this dry. It's It should dry for, it should actually dry and cure overnight. You should give it a lot of time and just let it be. Um, just to be safe, you want it to really get a nice, really hard, permanent bond. So we'll let that go. We'll come back to it after I finish the top and we'll fill it with some delicious candy. And then I'll also show you uh, a, the quick alternative, um, how you can be creative with it and make like the candle holder and that type of a thing. So um, stay tuned. So I have found a little wooden um, ball and what it's technically called is a, a doll head. You'll see this is one, it's got like a flat part and that makes it easier to actually affix. If it's round, you can still glue it, but it's going to rock a bit, so you'll have to hold it in place, and it will only have a tiny little um, contact point. Uh, but if you go in, and you would, I would, when I'm buying the clay pot, that way you know it's a reasonable size. Do you see how that kind of fits on there? That way, again, if you get, say, this uh, size, you would want a wooden ball that kind of matches. And again, you just at the at the at the uh, craft store, just kind of check everything out, make sure that they all kind of go together. And then all you're going to do is take so take your goop. I would affix it. And look, do you see there's some dried goop on there? I'm just going to kind of get that in the middle of the hole. You don't need much of it on this cuz it's the wood doesn't have a and I just eyeball it you could measure it out just to make sure but I just eyeball it and then you're going to want to leave that again to dry and cure completely and when that's completely dry we'll fill this up with candy and you can see the final product so we have allowed now the top to dry, the um, the candy holder part, the actual dish, and the bottom clay pot to dry. The glue is on there, as you can see. It's still, I mean, it takes a good few days to totally cure and harden, but it's on there nicely. I can lift it up if I want to. You can see this is sealed on there, and it actually looks quite nice. So now the next step is to fill this with candy. Uh, I went and I got a nice big bag of peanut M&M's, peanut butter M&M's, pardon me. Uh, so I'm going to just fill it up. Oops, sorry about the shaking. Let's move this over so we can see it a little better. And you, of course, could put anything in here. Um whatever your favorite candy is, gumballs, jelly beans. I wouldn't put anything that's not a harder candy. Like if you put a jujube in, it'll get sticky and this will be tougher to clean. Um, like you couldn't put this in the dishwasher if the dish got, if the bowl got dirty. I would just wash this with a warm cloth and then maybe wipe it out with an antibacterial kitchen wipe and then dry it, let it dry. But look at this, it's getting nice and full. So, again, I should have measured to see how much candy this actually takes. I'm, But you know me, I'm the uh, slapdash, chillax crafter. But we're almost full. Ah, that looks so neat. And then we take the top and put it on. And so then you have your candy jar, which I absolutely love. So if you wanted to make, uh, not make a candy jar, the alter an alternative is this cute little candle holder. I thought it looked kind of like 
um, a little bit nautical almost, as though it was kind of a, on a dock somewhere or out on a, on a street. And all it is, it's the same idea, except for I had found these cute little candle holders, and this is what it was. It was a collection like this of different colored ones um, at the craft store. So I picked them up, and then I just went and I found, like I'm always talking about, the subsequent, the matching size. So I went around and I felt, and that looked good there. And what I did was I, I made sure that that was the right size top to cover it. And then with this, I actually painted this in two layers. You can see it's dark underneath. So I painted a really dark blue, and I let that dry. And then I put the white on top, so it would have just kind of a weathered, uneven look. And I really kind of like it. And then I chose, it's hard to see it, but this here was just a little bead I had in my jewelry making supplies in my bead collection. But you could use another wooden um, a wooden doll head or a, a finial or anything, or you could just leave it plain. I'm always banging the camera, I'm so sorry. Um, again, I'm not putting this outside, so I just painted it with white Craftsmart, like the acrylic old style toll paint. You know, it's, it's for crafts, you can use it for anything. Uh, I thought maybe with this other one, I might try it with the black and see what it looks like. That's also, the black is what I used on the little uh, round handle, the doll head that became the handle on the candy holder. Uh, and you just do it the same way. You put it all together, paint it, glue it together, let it sit, and then instead of filling it with candy, I uh, use a little battery operated tea light and these are my favorite things I have to say I just want to say it aside these are amazing um, I love having little candles flickering and I have lots of teeny little tea, ho tea light holders but I am horrible for walking away from a burning candle and it's dangerous super dangerous not to be done um, so these you can just leave look at put that in there put that on and I know this is a bad angle but that's what it would be like and so it would be really cute. You can imagine maybe like two of these somewhere, matching ones, or just two that are semi-matching. I think that would be a really cute idea. But that's an alternative, uh, instead of the candy jar, you can do it that way. And here we have our finished products on the shelf. Um, I just put them together like that so that you could see. But uh, as you can see, here's the super cute super super adorable candy holder so you can see that there and isn't that neat like just reach in take a little treat mm -mm -mm. i love it and of course you could decorate the a little um round disc and put it there so it looks kind of like the coin slot or the dial uh you could put anything else on there you could decorate it anywhere add a bit of glitter add anything and do it in your own style, of course. And then, of course, there is, and I have it there lit so that you could see it, there is the little candle holder. And that's it with the candle inside. So that's really, really a cute idea too. Um, so yeah, I hope you really enjoyed these. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching the video. Please let me know what you think. Uh, it, is super awesome if you comment if you like my videos subscribe to my channel so you can see all the videos coming out if there's any crafts you'd like some help doing let me know I can try to make a video of it and uh, remember to uh, follow my lead Lola love often laugh always and try to be creative today take care